Hello, this video is on hypothesis testing, specifically on the chi-squared goodness of fit test, fitting observed data against specified proportions, as shown here in the syllabus. The basic steps of a chi-squared goodness of fit test are Step 1. State the null and alternative hypotheses. Step 2. Calculate the expected frequencies. Step 3. State the significance level and calculate the number of degrees of freedom. Step 4. Calculate the value of the test statistic and the p-value. Step 5. State the acceptance and rejection criteria. And step 6. To draw or make a conclusion, either using the test statistic or the p-value. To remind you of the acceptance and rejection criteria, if the test statistic is greater than the critical value, or if the p-value is less than the significance level, then there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis H0. Otherwise, we accept the null hypothesis H0. In this question, Igor knows the proportions of students studying Spanish, German and Russian in his year and he wants to investigate whether the choices follow the same proportion in the year below. So he has selected a sample of 60 students from the year below. In part A we are asked to state the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis H0 is that the data from the year below fits the distribution of Igor's year. And the alternative hypothesis, H1, is that the data from the year below does not fit the distribution of Igor's year. In part B, we're asked to state the number of degrees of freedom. So we use the formula, nu equals n minus 1, where n is the number of categories, in this case, 3. So 3 minus 1 is equal to 2, so there are 2 degrees of freedom. In part C, we're asked to calculate the expected frequencies and then to calculate the test statistic and the p-value. The expected frequencies are calculated assuming the null hypothesis H0 is true, so assuming that the proportions will be the same as those in Igor's year. And as the sample size was 60, one third of 60 is 20, one quarter of 60 is 15, and five twelfths of 60 is 25. In order to calculate the test statistic and the p-value, we need to enter the observed and expected frequencies into list one and list two on your calculator. So from the main menu, if you select statistics, and then press F6, and then F4 to delete all the contents of a list, and F1 to confirm that, and then scroll across and repeat the process for the other lists, F4 and F1. So we're now ready to enter the observed frequencies into list 1, 26, 16, and 18, and the expected frequencies into list 2, so it's 20, 15 and 25. Then if we press F6 twice to get back to the main statistics menu and press F3 for a test, F3 again for a chi-squared test and F1 for a goodness of fit test. Scrolling down and setting the number of degrees of freedom to equal 2 and press an execute. And then press in execute again to perform the test. Writing down the value of the test statistic and the p-value, and rounding the values to three significant figures. In part D, we're asked what should Igor conclude. 
So as the critical value has been given in the question, we can compare the test statistic to the critical value. And as 3.83 is less than 5.991, in other words, as the test statistic is less than the critical value, we conclude that there is insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis, H0. So we accept it. And finally, interpreting the conclusion in the context of the question, we state that there is sufficient evidence at the 5% significance level to suggest that the choices in the year below fit the distribution of the choices in Igor's year.